Howdy, my name is Mason Moody, and I'm majoring in mechanical engineering. I am speaking today about permanent magnet DC motor control. Designs can vary, but the most common design consists of a stationary magnet with rotating, current carrying armature interconnected to wire commutator segments and brushes made of carbon. This connection still allows the armature to turn freely in the magnetic field. Advantages include The ability to be built relatively small Construction is relatively cheap for smaller systems No field windings are required, so there are no field circuit copper losses Disadvantages include The magnet may get weak due to reactions with the armature the field in the air gap is fixed, and cannot be controlled externally. Common uses for permanent magnet DC motors include Toys of all shapes and sizes Computer drives Electric toothbrushes Vacuum cleaners Blowers for heaters and air conditioners System assumptions include The rotor and shaft are assumed to be rigid bodies the system operates under viscous friction. A single input from a voltage source goes into the system. A single output as angular velocity goes out of the system. Specifications for this particular DC motor were completely made up and include a rotor inertia, J, of 0.015 pounds inches per second squared. A viscous damping coefficient B of 0.3 pounds inch second over radian. A back EMF constant, K of 0.02 rotations per minute. An armature resistance, R of 0.95 ohms. And an armature inductance, L of 0.50 henrys. The DC motor system block diagram can be simplified to omega over V equals K over the quantity of R plus L S times the quantity of J S plus B plus K squared. The resulting MATLAB computation gives a step response with a settling time of 1.96 seconds, and a final value of 0.0655. We can make this respond better, and do faster, cooler things. To meet our response goals that I took upon myself to decide, I wish to have a settling time of less than 0.3 seconds, a rise time of less than 0.4 seconds, a percent overshoot of less than 8%, and a final value of 1 for the DC motor. Using the CISO tool to implement the PID controller and also alter the location of the poles, a step response was found that meets the criteria required. The final step response yields a percent overshoot of 6.77%, a settling time of 0.288 seconds, a rise time far less than 0.4 seconds, and a final value of 1. Here's the basic system model with our PID controller now included. It is colored red. In conclusion, the SISO tool is invaluable for early modeling of a motor before it's constructed. It saves time, effort, and money. Step responses can be easily manipulated with controllers, but it is important to know that controllers aren't a fix-all for your motor. If your motor is extremely inefficient, a controller can't miraculously make your motor efficient. An efficient motor leads to an efficient controller, and an inefficient motor leads to an inefficient controller.